And we are live from Lagos, Nigeria. This is Plus Sports Special on Plus TV Africa. This is a show that unbundles some of those stories bordering the world of sports and also looking at the legal angle to these stories. I've got Steve Austin on my boys, the head of sports, Petchton and Gray's LP. We'll be running through what we have for you this morning. Remember, you can also join the conversation by putting a call through to us later on on the show. Welcome to the show, Steve. Good morning, Doka. Thanks for having me. All right. And of course, I'm talking about the lockdown is still on and we hear that it to be eased from Monday. But of course, um, I'm very afraid because the cases are not dropping. Well, but life must go on. Mm. Um, how long are we going to continue staying at home while the economy continues to suffer? The mm. most important thing is to adhere to the protocols put in yeah. place by the government to ensure that everyone is safe at the end. Mm. So sure. um, hopefully we all get back to the trenches and life will get back to normal mm. because the numbers keep spiking up exactly. in spite of the lockdown. So mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, we might just as well take our chances and go back to work. <laughs> go back to work, but of course we keep doing the necessary things by staying um, covered uh, as well. When Steve came in here, he wore his face mask and I said, no, no you can't start the show with a face mask. But, but of course, we're on air, but we have to practice social distancing and uh, wash our hands always with alcohol-based and um, hand wash and always sanitize your hand and of course I move around with a face mask. That is a necessity right now. And let's be hopeful as we look forward to the end of COVID. COVID-19 because the impact of the virus on human beings, businesses, sports and countries worldwide has resulted in lockdowns or restricted movements in countries. Now sports organizations, leagues and clubs are and will be facing severe financial challenges as they work to overcome a significant loss of income and may be headed toward financial instability caused by COVID-19's impact on employment, sponsorships and our everyday lives. Now many sports clubs will not be able to cope with lucrative player contracts and will seek their mutual or unilateral termination. A particularly frequent question is whether a force majeure clause excuses, excuses parties from performing the obligations or from doing so on time. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what a force majeure is. Well, Steve is here to explain that and also take us through what the general concept of force majeure and, of course, uh, uh, looking at uh, what that term means and that affects the world of sports. Oh, well, thank you, Doka, once again. Um, a force majeure clause strictly speaking, is a civil law concept. Mm. It's just the principle that um, excuses or suspends contractual obligations when events beyond the contemplation of the parties mm -hmm. make performance of such obligation impossible. So uh, it developed, like I said, from the civil law tradition. What it simply means is that even if it is not expressly provided by the parties, mm. A, civil, a court in the civil law jurisdiction, such as France, would recognize a force majeure even when the parties have not expressly included one in a contract. Now, the common law tradition takes a slightly different view of force majeure. So it will boil down to what was strictly agreed between the parties mm -hmm. and down to judicial interpretation mm -hmm. to what a force majeure is. Now, a pandemic is usually not contemplated within a force majeure clause, except the parties were savvy enough to broaden the scope of the force majeure clause to include a pandemic. Where that is not the case, it will not be implied in a common law jurisdiction such as Nigeria. Of course, Nigeria followed our, the colonial tradition in adhering to the common law principle. Now, for civil law jurisdiction, it is slightly different, like I said, because they would imply it regardless of whether the parties contemplated so or not. And that was what played out in the case of uh, Zamalek Football Club and, yeah. and FIFA, where the, where, the, where the Court of Arbitration for Sports recognized the application of the force majeure clause, even when the parties did not expressly agree to a force majeure clause. Now, uh, a force majeure clause um, has a number of principles playing around it, one of which is the duty to mitigate losses or to provide alternatives. Usually when a force majeure event, the triggering event or cause, mm. which one of the contracting parties seeks to rely on. The party would has a duty to notify the other party mm -hmm. that the triggering event has occurred and that he intends to invoke the force majeure. Now, part of the things they will take into cognizance is whether the party seeking to invoke a force majeure clause has actually provided alternatives. And of course, that is why you hear stories, especially from England, that they, they are contemplating playing the remainder of the games, completing the season behind yeah. closed doors.
that is providing an alternative. Mm -hmm. Now everybody has come to the come to terms with the fact that the, the season might not end eventually. Mm -hmm. So what they are doing is to seek to mitigate the losses that will definitely arise should the season go uncompleted, especially mm -hmm. regards to the broadcast rights. Yeah. Now, for FIFA and for Court of Arbitration for Sports, you will remember that most of the headquarters of the sporting federations are in Switzerland. So they typically take a civil law approach to force majeure clause. Mm. So simply put, the parties need not expressly provide for a force majeure clause in their agreement or the contract before it is implied. However, and this um, would be interesting to note, that uh, the parties, the, the courts, don't readily imply a force majeure clause. Okay. Simply put, the defense of force majeure is not easily made out. It's not a cakewalk to establish a force majeure clause before the Court of Arbitration for Sports. Mm -hmm. Now you go through the entire gamut of the judicial structure from the Swiss Federal Tribunal, the Player Status Committee, the Dispute Resolution Chamber, and the Court of Arbitration for Sports. There's a seeming unanimity among all the decisions that a force majeure clause, in as much as the court has the discretion to imply a force majeure clause, cannot be easily established. And again, most of the readily available authorities on the point from these um, bodies I have reeled out show that most of the issues emanate from performance of financial obligations, mm -hmm. payment of staff salaries or player salaries and all that. So where you intend to invoke the force majeure clause, a number of hurdles will have to be crossed. The Swiss Federal Tribunal, for example, in a decision in, rendered in 2016, uh, the issue was the obligation on a contractor mm -hmm. to establish or construct a nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. Now, while performing the contract, there was an embargo placed by the Swiss government, which ultimately frustrated the party from performing the contract. Yeah. So the party sought to rely on a force majeure clause, and he was denied. Mm -hmm. Denied simply on the ground that the party could have reasonably foreseen that such an embargo would be placed. So um, you look at all the other decisions, most of the football decisions, one of them was in the case of Atletico Minero and uh, Dynamo Kiev. Uh, it, it was around um, a transfer agreement uh, between the two clubs. Uh, a, a, an Atletico Mineiro player moved from Atletico Mineiro to Dynamo Kiev. So the issue was the payment of one of the installments of the transfer fee. Now, the Atletico Mineiro sued Dynamo Kiev, Dynamo Kiev to recover the installment due on the transfer. Now, when the matter came to court, uh, Dynamo Kiev sought to invoke a force majeure clause on the grounds that the, most of its first team players um, contracted diseases and we are unable to, and they, they've been, they are unable to um, get most of their gate tickets and ticket fees and merchandise and everything. So it was, it was now a question of whether that defense yeah. availed the club. Uh, Court of Arbitration for Sports, interestingly, refused. And, and again, one of the defenses was the, on the grounds that there was an illegal freezing of the account of uh, Dynamo Kiev, which yeah. ultimately frustrated the club from paying the transfer installment. Mm. So Court of Arbitration for Sports also refused this defense. So wh when you look at most of them, most of these cases, there was one also between uh, Metalist Kharkiv and PSV Eindhoven, also on transfer of players, where the force majeure argument was also refused, or defense was also refused by the courts. So when you look at most of these decisions, you see a trend. The single strand is that when it comes to performance of financial obligations, the court of arbitration for sports will be most reluctant in upholding a defense of force majeure. Mm. Now, you come to a common law tradition or yeah. a common law country like Nigeria or England, the parties would have expressly included the, the clause in the contract. In the contract. If they don't include that clause in the contract, no courts would imply a force majeure defense. Mm. Now, look, looking at um, the situation that we are right now, talking about the coronavirus pandemic, 
does it force does it constitute a force majeure well uh, last week in one of our series mm. um, the covid-19 series on this show we addressed the issue of fifa regulatory issues yeah at the circular 1714 issued by fifa on the 7th of april uh, the circular interestingly declared the covid-19 pandemic yeah as a force majeure event now I had to go through uh, most of the decisions. Like I said, none of the readily available decision supports this conjecture by FIFA. Now, when is that moment a club, an association, a business should declare a pandemic? Well, um, like I said, it's a matter of contract now. Mm. It's not something you wake up and say, okay, this pandemic um, this is a pandemic, and as such, I have excused from or suspended from performing my contractual obligations. Yeah. So it's a matter of what the contract provides. So, and I will limit my discussion, of course, obviously, for uh, very obvious reasons, uh, to the Nigerian League. Yeah. You look at the Nigerian League, uh, it will all boil down to what the employer has agreed with the players mm -hmm. and um, what's the clubs for those of them those are the clubs that have um, sponsors what they have agreed with their sponsors mm. so if they have a term in the or a clause in the contract that can excuse performance for the further performance of their contractual obligation that is when you can say okay that the post major can kick in mm. in the absence of that there's nothing anybody can do about it mm. well wow, because um i'm looking at it based on sentiments you now the sentimental angle of uh, a businessman now you're running a business and this kind of pandemic breaks out. It's difficult for you to put in, say, yeah, in as much as I want to be sympathetic, like what's happening in the, in the EPL, not just EPL, all over the world, all the leagues. Now, if the league doesn't get finished at a particular time, there's a huge debt these leagues will pay for broadcast rights and all that. But what I've said, okay, let's be sentimental about, about this. We know that this is not the fault of the EPL. It's not the fault of the Ligon. This is a global pandemic. Why not just come to a center table and work things out? But it looks like this is not the case here. I, and I don't think force majeure will play in this, in, in this aspect. Okay, uh, one of the alternatives or options open to parties who are confronted with this kind of conundrum mm. is to uh, perhaps go back to the table and mm. say, okay, um, can we vary the provisions of our contract? In other words, can we amend that portion of our contract mm. so that because of business relationship, yeah. you obviously want the business to continue after the COVID-19 pandemic. So that is part of the things you put on the table. Mm. And um, it's going to depend on how forceful the negotiations are between the two parties. Mm. So when one of the parties is able to persuade the other party to see reasons why um, the um, uh, existing contractual terms should be departed from, that can be done. So where they unfortunately don't agree and they swim in the murky waters of litigation, yeah. it would boil down to judicial interpretation. Mm. That's a difficult one right there, but we're just hoping that this pandemic ends pretty soon.